Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? Happy Thursday, business, excuse me, happy Tuesday, business accelerators. My week is getting away from me already. Wow. Right? So today we're starting a four-part series on SOPs. And everybody who knows what an SOP is like, <laughs> but an SOP is actually super sexy and exciting if you know how to use them to save yourself <laughs> time and money. So for those of you who don't know what an SOP is, a SOP is basically a standard operating procedure or the instructions on how to do anything. So today we're going to talk about how to make an SOP template and how to create an SOP for pretty much anything in your business. And we mean anything and we mean everything. <laughs> Absolutely. The reality is you already have a standard up operating procedure or an SOP in your business. You likely, in many cases, don't have it documented so that it can be a repeatable task for your entire team to follow. So that's why we're going to spend the next, uh, the next four weeks breaking down some different SOP ideas. Uh, obviously, this is not an all-inclusive list, but we'll give you some cool gifts, some cool uh, tricks, uh, and give you some information to get you moving forward. You're giving so, them a gift or a gif? A gif. A gift. Oh, a gift, yeah. not a gift. You're going to get a free <laughs> gift. Uh, you'll see the gift down in the comments here shortly. Uh, so this week, we're going to talk about how you can leverage or use SOPs to successfully onboard new clients, right? So you've scheduled a meeting. Uh, you've got yourself prepared. You researched your client. You, you know kind of what they're about, and you're ready to, to go in there and shine and win. And you process or you, you complete your meeting, and the, the client has decided that they want to hire you to perform whatever service it is that you do. Now the next step is you have to get them onboarded. So I guess the question is, do you get off that meeting and hang up the phone and start scrambling, trying to figure out what it's gonna to take to get them a, propo a proposal, uh, send over contracts and whatever else you may need? Uh, how do you get filing systems set up for your clients? You know, all those sorts of things. So we're gonna give you a couple of ideas on how to create an SOP for that. First and foremost, have a written and detailed checklist in order. Um, from the time you hang up from your, your meeting, a phone call or a Zoom meeting with your prospective client, um, what does the next step look like? Um, you know, the first step, again, put it in a checklist format so that it's uh, repeatable and everyone on your team, if you have one, knows exactly what steps to follow to, to ensure that um, the client is properly onboarded. Um, you're probably doing this automatically right now, but imagine the beauty of it. If you had five clients that hit you today, uh, would you be prepared and organized to be able to properly and efficiently uh, onboard them into your system? I'm going to say no. I'm going to bet most people are going to stay up till 2 a.m. because they don't have a system. Absolutely. So having a checklist is at the very first, at the very top of the list of things that you need to do. You know, the who, where, when, and why. Um, involve the client. If there's things that you're going to need from them, include that information on your checklist. If they need to provide you such as passwords or uh, files or documents, uh, whatever it is that you're going to need in order to perform your job duties to serve your client, include that in your onboarding uh, SOP so that as quickly as possible, you can transition from a prospective client to a full-blown client where you can get to work serving them. Uh, that would include things like setting up a communication. The reality is uh, everyone likes and has their own preferred way of communication. Some prefer to communicate via text message. Some prefer to communicate via email. Don't necessarily recommend it, but your client may prefer that. Uh, there's several different platforms such as Slack if you want written communication where you can share uh, uh, files and documents. Uh, there's audio communication with things like Voxer. Uh, what's the one on Facebook? Facebook Messenger? Yeah, but you can do verbal, I guess, voice too on Messenger. Yeah, anyway, find video. out, yeah, within your SOP, find out, <clears throat> have a system in place to be able to verify how that you and your client are going to communicate with each other uh, and make sure that's a part of it. So you have that system set up so that you can get the ground running. Preferably use one method of contact. Absolutely. Not all of them. Absolutely. Ideally, you're, you're going to want to lean towards what your client prefers because at the end of the day, they're the ones paying the bill. Uh, but at the same time, you can suggest alternatives if it's something that you prefer and maybe they just aren't uh, aware of it. They haven't had any experience with it. And hey, you might just change their life and give them a new platform. That's another amazing benefit of an SOP is uh, educating <clears throat> people on other opportunities. 
So again, for new client onboarding, again, we're going to spend the next four weeks really digging deep into uh, different ways to create an SOP. The reality is every aspect or everything that you do in your business has an SOP. It just may not be properly written. Um, you know, one quick and easy tip for a way to create your SOP, if you're not really sure where to start, simply record yourself doing it. Uh, turn on the record button on your computer and record every step you take, what files you go back and forth to. You know, are you going to your Google Drive? Are you setting up LastPass? Are you uh, connecting various communication systems? Just record it and then write it down. It's really that simple. Um, don't make it complicated. Don't be scared of SOPs. It's, it's a fancy term, but really all it is, is your, it's your employee handbook. It's your owner's manual to tell you how and when you expect things to get done. Right. And how good your SOPs are or how many you have is usually a sign of how detailed you are and how fast, if I don't know, I became incapacitated, could somebody else come in and take over what I do? And the reality is in most businesses, the answer is no. Like if something happens to somebody, there's no backup plan. And then your SOP is basically your backup plan. So you want to spend the time to do this. Yes, it's not fun. Yes, it doesn't make you any money but it does save you time. It does save you money and it may save your butt someday. Yeah. And the reality is that the, the, the beautiful uh, end game of a properly organized and efficient SOP is to come up with a system to automate it. So as you've done these things on a repetitive nature uh, more than once, uh, multiple times, you start to look for and identify, is there something in this process or the entire process that can be automated where once you hang up with a client meeting, for example, in this case, you could hit one button and the rest of the process takes care of itself. There's a lot of technology, a lot of apps and a lot of support out there that can help you do that. But first, just identify what your operating procedures are, get them written down and then go from there. Well, and the problem too with a lot of people is that their SOP is not done standard. So it might have 10 steps, but they never do the 10 steps in the same order. And that's usually where the mistake happens because you did A instead of B and you forgot C and moved on to D and then all of a sudden it's messed up. And as boring as it sounds, it's usually better to just do it one, two, three, four, all the way through. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, speaking of gifts, I think Hillary has a nice little gift for you that will be dropping in the comments here in just a few minutes. <laughs> so as a gift, not to be confused with a GIF, <laughs> We're going to give you our SOP template for you to start your own for your business, as well as uh, directions on how to make your own SOPs for everything in your business. So check that out. Yeah, it's basically your SOP on how to create an SOP. <laughs> Happy fun. Happy SOP creating, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.